Welcome, Pewter Report readers, viewers, and listeners to a brand new edition of the Pewter Report podcast, energized by Celsius, the official energy drink of PewterReport.com. It is a Thursday edition of the show, the last of the week, but we always try to save our best for last. Today's episode, it's going to start with Levante David. This is a Levante David appreciation session today. And uh, we'll also talk about the Bucks' plans for Levante David as he is going into free agency. But I think we kind of all know where his uh, <clears throat> mind is made up and where his heart wants to be as well. So we're going to talk about number 54, Levante David, on today's show. I'm your host, Matt Matera. Join with me as my fellow colleague from PewterReport.com, Adam Slavon. Adam, how are we doing? Doing great, Matt. It's a great Thursday. Uh, that picture of Levante David there in his creamsicle. I got my creamsicle Celsius next to me. Nice. We're, we're doing great. And it's a great topic at hand today, uh, discussing Levante David. And just the fact that he continues to defy father time at the inside linebacker position. Really hit the rewind button la- uh, this past season. And excited to talk about his future because it sounds like he still has a lot more left in the tank. It absolutely does, and it's kind of crazy to think, what has Levante David played, 13 seasons now? Yeah. Yeah, so 13 seasons, and I'm not going to say getting better, but like still playing at a very, very, very um, high level. And I would still argue that Antoine Winfield Jr. is probably the best player on the Bucs defense, but – yeah. Um, it's crazy to think like where the Bucks would be without Levante David, not only like when they were in the dark days of, uh, <laughs> of like losing seasons where they could have been even worse if it wasn't for Levante David, but even more importantly, when they started being a Super Bowl winner and a perennial playoff contender, how important he has been to this team. And I, I know like, Mike and Levante are kind of linked a little bit. Yeah. Um, obviously, yeah. Levante's been on the team for a little bit longer, but I think there's an even greater sense of appreciation for Levante because he stuck it out. There are a lot of guys, and I won't really blame any of them, but there are a lot of people that, when it was like their first opportunity to be in free agency would say, man, screw this. Like, I don't want to play. Let's, on let's go get the bag. Yeah. Let's get the bag and let's go play for a winner somewhere else. But guys like Mike Evans and Levante, they decided to uh, stick with it and enjoy the fruits of their labor, which was obviously when Brady and Gronk came in and some of the other additions that they made and to win a Super Bowl back in 2020 and to be on winning teams and make the playoffs the last four years. And those are the first times that Levante David and Mike Evans made the playoffs um, in their career. So there's a lot to be commended for in the career of Levante David. Yeah. And I really like the parallel that you have with Mike Evans. When you look at those two guys and when you think of Buccaneer players, what do Buccaneer players embody? You think of Mike Evans and Levante David. And what I really appreciate about both of them is that through the losing seasons, the winning seasons, they were the same guy. They had the same production. They were the same player, the same leader, and they brought the same value. And those two players are the core of this team, uh, even as they enter their 30s, which is crazy to say. And when you you think of, like, the best Buccaneers of all time, like, both of those guys are in the top 10. You can make an argument even higher. Like, they just mean so much to Tampa Bay. And – With all this talk of Baker Mayfield, Antoine Winfield Jr., uh, Mike Evans re-signing, it's like Levante David, he's an underrated player, and he's getting underrated in free agency. And, like, this is a great topic because Levante David means so much, and it's he's worthy of flowers. Yeah, Bat W says, the real captains of the offense and defense. It's absolutely true. And uh, Bat W had another good comment. Just pay what Levante David wants. He's always been fair. He has been yeah. very, very fair uh, when it comes to the Buccaneers. And I think he deserves a raise this season. I mean, you look at the stats that Levante David had. 134 tackles, 17 tackles for loss, four and a half sacks, and uh, one forced fumble on the season. 
Those tackles were the most that Levante David made in a season since 2015. Since yeah. 2015. And that was when Levante was essentially being Pro Bowl worthy and uh, made an all-pro in there as well. Those 17 tackles for loss and the four and a half sacks, those are the most that Levante David has had since a year after that in 2016. So he's playing still at an all-time high level. There would be no reason other than money-wise why the Bucs wouldn't bring back Levante. And let's also be realistic about it. The Bucs need Levante David. I know yeah. that they drafted another linebacker. I'm not even going to call it his replacement, but they do have Servasse Dennis on the team and ready to go. But like Servasse Dennis did not play much last season. And yeah. sure, linebacker can be replaced. And a lot of times you don't see linebackers get drafted in the top 10. I know Levante David was the fifth overall pick. Sometimes there are exceptions to the rule. But there's a difference between replacing a linebacker and replacing someone the caliber of Levante David. I think across yeah. the league, there's only a couple of guys that kind of fit that mold. Levante is one of them for sure. I think Patrick Queen very much got himself um, into that conversation as well. Um, but even like, I don't know, the Ravens sticking with them, they had C.J. Mosley a couple of years ago. He ended up going to the Jets, and he's super important to the Jets and their yeah. defense. But the Ravens were able to move on. So it's a very, very short list. Uh, Roquan Smith as well, um, as Angle says. There are a, a couple of like elite inside linebackers that you want to keep those guys. The rest of the league, I think you can kind of have turnover year in and year out. Uh, but Levante David, I think, is definitely in that category. Yeah, especially when looking at like inside linebackers. Like throughout the 2010s, you had the Luke Keekleys, the Patrick Willis's, Bobby Wagner. Yeah. Levante David's right there with him, and it speaks to his longevity. Like uh, Keekley and Willis, they both retired before 30. Bobby Wagner, he's a little bit younger than Levante. Levante's still doing it, and he's still doing it at a high level. And you talked about the importance of the Buc Buccaneers being able to re-sign Levante David, especially with Devin White being out of the picture. The Buccaneers can't afford to lose both inside linebackers in one offseason. And Levante David has so much value on the field and then off the field, being a mentor to guys like Servasier Dennis, J.J. Russell. If they decide to maybe draft a guy on day two of the NFL draft, it's like Levante, he's the heart of the defense, and they really need to keep it keep him because he keeps it beating. Oh, there is, there is no question about it. I think the mentorship role more than anything else, uh, like you mentioned, Adam, is most important because it's not even just the linebackers. Everybody looks up to Levante David for a, a number of different reasons. I mean, he's the guy, again, going back to kind of the bad, the bad times, he would be the one that would still be speaking uh, after every game, whether it was win, lose, or draw. He was the guy that would have to answer for um, a lot of the issues that was going on with the Bucks, even though he wasn't the reason that the teams were having said issues. You know, it was kind of – everybody else around him. And then more than anything else, he's always let his play do, um, do the talking. And he always plays at a very high level. And the Bucs, I'm not going to say the Bucs have taken that for granted by any means, but they obviously were able to kind of use it to their advantage last season with Levante and re-signing him last season. Because last year, as far as the, his contract went, they got him at least for what was like on the, um, what was on the salary cap for the Bucks. It was four and a half million for Levante yeah. David. He ended up getting around seven million with uh, with roster bonuses and a couple of incentives, which I think they'll do something similar this year, where it's not going to be the most difficult incentives to reach. So it, it'll be something that's like very very attainable for him to get but a base salary of four and a half million for the what Levante a steal David what a bargain is, <laughs> is um kind of nuts <laughs> if, yeah. if we're being honest so and granted the bucks were very very strapped last year financially um but this season they do have a little more room a little more flexibility i wouldn't be shocked if over the next couple of days we hear about contract restructures for other guys to create a little bit more room, kind of looking at Chris Godwin and 
a couple of other players, even Mike Evans, who they just signed. Uh, I think they're going to be able to build a little more cap room with Mike Evans. And this is the year for Levante. It's either this year or next year. I think it's the season where you don't want to give a guy a lifetime achievement award because we've seen that burn other teams, not even just in the NFL, but in all sports where it's like, Hey, we're going to pony up and pay you for what you've done in the past. as like a thank you. And then they're just getting overpaid at a washed up veteran age. That is not the case with Levante David. Um, not at all. But with all that said, he does deserve a raise for what he's been able to do. Yeah. And especially looking back at last off season when like, I think the bills were interested, the Raiders Raiders were interested. Yeah. He could have got 10 million a year, maybe 12 million a year just off his name value alone. But the fact that he re-signed for four and a half million and kind of let the other guys, they granted they were cap strapped, but yeah. he let other guys get a payday and he's just going to worry about himself. And looking ahead at, at this free agency, maybe next year, if he decides to play at 35, the Buccaneers should reward him for his accomplishments with like a one-year deal. It's happened in other sports and baseball. I remember, I think it was Derek Jeter with the Yankees, like his last year, they gave him like pretty solid money for a 39-year-old yeah. shortstop. It's like the Buccaneers should do the same thing. I think the Lakers kind of did that with Kobe towards the end yeah, of Kobe's I think it was career. Like, Two years, $50 million for Kobe back when, I think it was after his Achilles injury. Yeah, but again, this is, goes back to what we were just talking about. Like, Levante has earned all of that. Yeah. He's, like, Kobe wasn't uh, – granted, Kobe is a Hall of Famer and put up insane numbers, and now we're just talking about apples to oranges with different <laughs> sports. But, like, Kobe wasn't getting, uh, you know, more points per games or more, uh, I don't know, steals in a season than he was five years before that you know yeah um and obviously football is a way more physical sport so it's even like crazier what Levante David has been able to do and I think like obviously there is a succession plan in place with um you know Servasi Dennis waiting in the wings and I don't hate the idea and who knows like I hope this isn't Levante's last season. He clearly wants to play. So I'm glad the discussion is like, when is he going to come back to the box versus does he want to play at all? Cause it very much feels like Levante is ready to go for another season. Um, yeah. And maybe it's, it's two more seasons um, after this. I think everybody would be rooting for um, that type of situation as well. But I do like the idea of everybody knowing, okay, like, so I say Dennis is going to be the inside linebacker after whenever Levante David decides to hang it up and let Levante David be that, you know, mentor to him for the next two seasons. He's already done that to a degree with just the team in general. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's the worst thing to have a succession plan because we've seen the Bucks have succession plans with Todd Bowles coming in for, <laughs> for Bruce Arians and um, a couple other situations Sometimes it's nice to have a, a plan in place. Um, I hate thinking about Levante David not playing football anymore, but you do have to plan for the future too. Yeah, for sure. And I think that Servasia Dennis, kind of the same mold as Levante David, kind of being that coverage corner, being able to blitz. He fits a lot of what Levante David does, but obviously there's no replacing Levante David. But on a team last year with 15 rookies, they were all pups. And Levante, yes. he still has showed that he is the big dog. He should get x-rays because he has that dog in him. He's had it <laughs> in him since since he was drafted over a decade ago. And it's just it's just amazing, Matt, what he's been able to continue to do on a yearly basis. And comparing that to other inside linebackers, too, like Derek Brooks. He had a really good yeah. season at age 33 before kind of regressing at 34 and 35. How many more years do you think Levante has? Do you think... It's another year or two, or do you think he can keep going? I think Levante will play for, I'm going to guess two more seasons because he's played 13. If he plays two more, that's 15, right? Yeah. Am I getting that correct? I don't know. Something about saying like 15, I think is, is kind of a milestone. I, I hate when people do like, oh, this is the 12 year anniversary of something. Like let's do it in increments of five. You know, yeah, so I agree. I think there's something really cool to be said about playing 15 years in the NFL. And, 
you know, we'll see about next season. We'll, we'll see if he plays after that. But playing so late at such a high level, um, I think it is, is really commendable as well. Like, again, to draw this back to different sports where it's apples and oranges, I always thought it was interesting when, like, David Ortiz on the Red Sox retired because he was still at the height of his game when he oh, was yeah. retired. There's also that what if of um, Tom Brady retiring the first time after 2021 before he unretired and came back for uh, his last season. Let's not forget the Bucs were balling that year. Like that was a great team and Brady was absolutely balling as well. I wonder how we look at Brady and his career. If he would have retired the season before then, you know, kind of what the 2022 season ended up being. And I don't put that blame on, on Tom Brady that much, um, but it would be interesting to see like how Levante plays this season. If it's still at a high level, screw it. Why not go for one more or on the same side? Hey, I've done all I could 14 years, still playing at the top of my game. Um, I'm just going to go out like this because I want to get a gold jacket, um, but we'll see. And that was, Kind of a goal of Jason Light as well. He said, I uh, I want to get Levante David on that Mount Rushmore for yep. the box. Now, that's going to be really tough because Derek Brooks kind of has a little bit of uh, bragging rights over Levante, I would say, or a little bit of a better argument is probably the, the better phrase. But nonetheless, um, maybe they could put Levante into the Ring of Honor like before he retires and have That'd it like, be cool. a on-field thing. That would be interesting. Uh, but yeah. let's get to a couple super chats. Appreciate you guys for these super chats. You guys know the rule. If you super chat us, we get to it as soon as we possibly can. We make sure we answer every single one. So let's start it off with Jesse Locklear. Thanks for the $5 super chat, Jesse, who says, Thanks, Jesse. Join live instead of listening on Spotify. Awesome to have you live, Jesse. That's great. Up here in upstate New York, Miss Florida, and going to Bucks games. Jesse, please comment again. Uh, where in upstate New York? I'm just... Very curious because I had friends that went to a lot of the SUNY schools. My sister-in-law grew up in upstate New York. So uh, please comment back. I'm curious to see where you are uh, uh, watching from. Anyway, um, any interest in Bill's Tredavious White since he was released? Yeah, that's one of the big things. Um, the Bills obviously have to get under the salary cap. They're letting yeah. out a lot of everybody players. Everyone except for Von Miller, who did restructure his deal to obviously help with the salary cap situation. Tredavious White, obviously a very talented guy. I was just trying to pull up his contract. Um, he was getting paid whew, quite a bit. Yeah. Um, he was set to get paid 13 and a half million uh, uh, this upcoming season. He was about to get paid. Um, he got paid like 14 million last year. It was a cap hit of 16 million after some of the, um, the bonuses and, and things of that nature. I imagine he's going to look for a similar type of deal. So that puts the bucks out of the running. I mean, this is under the assumption that they let go of Carlton Davis. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if they would let go of Carlton to pay more for a corner. Uh, Jesse says Lakewood, New York. Um, don't know where that is. I apologize. I was just curious, but anyway, thank you, Jesse. I think the Bucks would go the route of just kind of trying to develop their own um, their own corner at that position, unless it's you know a week away from training camp, he's still available and his price comes much much way more down. down. But uh, teams are always looking for corners. I mean, Stefan Gilmore was the big one a couple seasons ago, and there was that connection of oh the buck should sign stefan gilmore and then he ended up going to carolina of all places and then ended up on the cowboys last year i believe it's the cowboys yeah. um so ideally like in a perfect world yeah it would be cool i just i don't necessarily see it with you're essentially swapping carlton for tredavious white and paying a little bit more yeah, you're replacing one injury-prone corner for another. Uh, Tredavious White, the past two seasons, I think he's played like 10 games and 20 over the past three seasons. Really talented, all-pro corner when he's healthy. But again, the health is a big issue. And with so many corners on the free agency market, you yeah. mentioned like Xavier Howard with the Dolphins, one yeah. of the best corners. He's a free agent. And then the safeties, I think every single safety in the NFL has been cut <laughs> pretty much uh, 
over the past week or so. So, I mean, there's a lot of options out there on the market. But right now, I think the Bucks, their concern would probably be trading Carlton Davis and yeah. then filling that role. It would be a long shot to see a veteran. I think they're really high on Zion McCollum and maybe drafting another guy on uh, day two or day three of the NFL draft. There is another safety I want to talk about uh, in a little bit. However, we do have another super chat, and so we're going to get to that first. But thank you to Randy Douglas for this six ninety nine super chat, who says, "Happy belated, Matt." Thank you very much, Randy. March born people are the strongest or, or the toughest, whichever you're going for. But hell yeah, I guess I'll go this way. Um, I'm guessing you have a March birthday as well, Randy. So if that's the case, very cool. Pisces gang, let's go. Uh, and you don't replace a Levante David. You hope to find someone who helps reduce the pain of his loss. Yeah, I mean, th there's no replacing a guy no. like Levante David. It's just impossible. But with that said, I mean, no one thought there'd be another Derek Brooks, and then they got Levante David. So uh, there, there is a precedent of, like, you can still find a franchise player. Just everyone's going to have their own personality and, and things different. So, um, yeah, I mean, Levante, in his own way, is is one of a kind. Yeah, you can replace maybe the production at some point, but you yeah. can't replace the impact. And I really like this quote that Levante had when he was talking on Ronnie and T. Kraz, when he said, uh, Tampa is a place where I've grown to become a man. He spent, mm. like, ever since he was drafted, in, I don't know, 21, 22, up until now, he, he's been in Tampa Bay, and he's learned uh, everything about Tampa, the community. He's been very involved in the community. And it's like, you can't replace that. You can't just put anyone in his shoes and say, hey, go be the next Levante David. He really is one of a kind, Matt. He he absolutely is. And I like this comment from Charles Reed. who says, David plays timeless football, and he follows that up with, um, he's got to be a lifer. Um, the reason why I wanted to talk about safeties is this guy that uh, many Peter people have been talking about the past couple of days, as yeah. Gary Buff is asking, is Whitehead coming back? Well... If you go onto the Twitter machine, or now known as the X machine, nobody is a better hype man for Jordan Whitehead than Jordan Whitehead. I mean, I kind of love this approach that Jordan Whitehead is doing because sometimes you'll have other people speaking for you or your agent will come out and, and speak for you. Listen, Jordan Whitehead is a free agent. He can do and say what he wants. And so he's his why, own agent. Yeah, why not? advocate for yourself and try to hype up your own play, your own worth and get people in the mix and talking about you. So if you haven't been on uh, social media today, Jordan Whitehead woke up in, in some type of mood. I'm going to pull up, uh, I'm going to pull it up real quick. He, he had a couple of words in the morning of uh, something. And then he got to the highlights. Uh, where is it? Oh, I think he deleted some of the the tweets that he had because oh, he started he? it. He had a, he had the prayer emoji yesterday, and then he had a couple of tweets. But Jordan Whitehead does kind of do that a lot. He'll, he'll tweet a couple of things and then delete it later. But today he's just been tweeting nonstop videos of like plays that he's made. A lot of like him stopping the run. His first three videos are all of him on the box. Sorry, his first four. Then there's a play of him from Pitt, uh, a couple college plays, and then, um, yeah, the three interception game against the Bills to start the season with the Jets. He also had an interception for the Jets uh, against the Raiders on Sunday Night Football. I remember that vividly because I did a prop bet of Jordan Whitehead to get an interception and Man. had a big, big payout because yep. specific interceptions uh, are always big. Uh, a couple other Jets highlights as well. So Jordan Whitehead is just out there. I don't know if he's cutting up the film or if he's got someone else cutting up the film, but he is just out there uh, putting out his own highlight tape for every single GM in the NFL to uh, to take a look at. Now, Matt, I don't know if you saw like uh, on there, Rashad White quote tweeted one of the Jordan Whitehead plays. Oh, and no. He kind of did the hmm emoji, which is funny. It's like, hey, the Buccaneers, they're seeing it. Like he's a fit. He would fit right in with uh, Jamel Dean and the rest of the secondary, pick up right where he left off. It connects a lot of dots, and the Bucks could get him on the cheap because you look at the market, there's so many top names. A second-tier name like Jordan Whitehead, a quality starter, he might not command as much now. 
Yeah, and uh, Tom Buck's fan says he knocked out Aaron Jones on a legal hit. I think a lot of people remember, um, yeah, in the NFC Championship. It was like the first play of the second half, and he forced that fumble on Aaron Jones after a, a short pass to him. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we kind of had this discussion about um, Jordan Whitehead, and at the time, I was thinking he's probably going to be out of the price range for the Buccaneers, and that still could be the case, especially yeah. with – what happens to Baker Mayfield and how much money they have to allocate for him. Because remember, if they are able to strike a deal with Baker and it's for like 32 million per year, instead of 36, 37 million there, that gives them like 4 million of, of leeway to use it in, in any way that they see fit. And maybe that means Jordan Whitehead at the time. I felt Whitehead was going to be a little bit too much, but now with some more of these cuts, at corner and but specifically for Jordan Whitehead at safety, there's more people to choose from. And then Jordan Whitehead's going to be looking for a place to play. Why not? If he can kind of be okay with making a little bit less, but you're going to be in a good situation with a team you want a Super Bowl with, the same guys you played with in the secondary with Antoine Winfield Jr., yeah. Carl the Davis, and Jamel Dean, and Levante David, like all guys that you played with. Um, same coach, same defense that he's running. And I don't know if you remember, Adam, because it was so long ago, but that after the first week of the season, Todd Bowles got asked about that Jets-Bills game because Jordan Whitehead had three interceptions in it, and it was the second biggest story after Aaron Rodgers got injured. Yeah, And Todd Bowles was like, I am so happy for him. I always root for, like, any of my guys that I got to coach at some point, and you know, all this stuff. So we know Todd Bowles would absolutely welcome it. I just don't know at this current moment if Jordan Whitehead financially uh, is in the right spot that the Bucs uh, would take him back up. Yeah, I'd be curious to see the financials because I think he was getting $7 million a year from the Jets. He had like a two-year, $14 million deal. Would he take like five, maybe four or five million and maybe come four. back for a year? Yeah, because, I mean, that's another thing, too. And, and some players, we see it from time to time. Um, I had someone in mind, but it, it just slipped out. There are a couple guys that will take – like, Jadavion Clowney isn't the best example, but he's a guy that would just take a one-year deal and kind of bet on himself. And if he has a better season, then next year he can kind of get the big payout. We do see yeah. that in the NFL. Uh, franchise tag is kind of another example of that, of you kind of have to prove it one more time. So I don't think there's any shame in Jordan Whitehead taking a $4 million year deal, spending one season back in Tampa and, uh, you know, trying to play well and, and get more money because of it. It's kind of like how he got that contract with the jets in the first place. So you could see uh, if it happens again, other people have kind of talked about Jamal Adams, um, with yeah. the Buccaneers. Unless it was for the veteran minimum, I have no interest in that at all. Uh, Todd Bowles coached him, right, with the Jets? Is that the connection? His rookie year? Or no? Maybe his rookie year. Um, Got to double check on that. Let me look that up real quick. Uh, Jamal Adams. Jamal Adams, his first year was 2017. Uh, yeah, Todd Bowles did have him. So, yeah, Bowles is familiar with him for sure. Um, Bowles. That would mean Casey Rogers and yeah. Larry Foote too, right? Yeah, he Larry, actually yeah. he coached he coached Jamal Adams for two years. So he okay. does have familiarity uh, with him for sure. But here is why I wouldn't do it. Again, unless it's for the veteran minimum, because at that point, who cares? It's the veteran minimum. Um. Jamal Adams still walks around and carries himself as if he is Deion Sanders, which yeah. he is absolutely not. When he was healthy, he was a great player. There was no doubt about it. Those were some bad Jets teams, but Jamal Adams made it tolerable, <laughs> you know, to yeah. watch. The other side of it is that he gets hurt all the time. And I don't like getting on players' cases, about, like, when it comes to – being injury prone because like sometimes you can't control it sometimes yeah. it, it's kind of out of out of your reach but at the end of the day and the bucks have seen this with carlton with jamel 
if you're not on the field, you're not helping the team. And we'll see what happens with Carlton Davis, but the Bucs are running that risk next season with Jamel Dean again. Like, they're, would anyone be surprised if Jamel Dean missed four games this upcoming season? I know I wouldn't. No. Um, so, like, do you want to bring in Jamal Adams and say, oh, here's our answer at strong safety. You can move him around and play other places, but he would be good in, in playing in the box and, and helping the yep. run. He could blitz, too, again, when healthy. But if he's only out there for, like, six games, is, is, is it worth the signing? If it's a veteran minimum? Yeah, I think it is worth the signing. But if it's anything where you're actually giving – legitimate dollars and cents to Jamal Adams. I, I don't see how there could be any, any market for Jamal Adams. Yeah. I don't think the bucks could go into the season expecting him to be the starter. And he's not the guy that's going to sign to be a backup either. I don't think yeah. his ego will let Again, him. I mean, it he's goes, a, exactly. It goes back to the ego thing. He's an all pro safety. Hey, I want to be a starter. I want to be that guy. It's like, I don't know if he's still him or not. So yeah. I don't think the bucks are, really going to be in the market for Jamal Adams. They're probably going to lean towards somebody younger and maybe with more upside uh, and less of a risk, I would say. I will tell you, there is one spot where there was a huge market in this specific area, and that is Celsius Energy Drinks, the official energy drink of the Pewter Report podcast. Make sure you check out the Celsius Essentials, which are the newest line of Celsius. They're the tall boys. You can get 270 milligrams of caffeine with these Celsius Essentials, and they got great flavors like the Blue Crush and the Dragonberry. So whether it's the Celsius Essentials or maybe you want an original flavor of Celsius like the – what do I got over here? The Sparkling Cucumber Lime or the Sparkling Orange, the Fuji Apple Pear, uh, the Cosmic Vibe, the Tropical Vibe, or my favorite, the Arctic Vibe. Go to the Celsius Store Locator on their website – Punch in your address, and it'll tell you the closest geographical location where you could pick up a Celsius energy drink. It might be a Walmart, might be a Target, could be a health and fitness store. And if you're lucky enough, it might just be your bodega. Bodega. That was deep. That was deep, man. <laughs> and once you keep going to your bodega and you want to start getting it in bulk, you want to know where to find it, you can get it in bulk. Go over to Amazon Prime. Buy that variety pack. It's variety spice of life, and there's so many great flavors of Celsius. And the cool thing, if you buy it online on Amazon, put the subscribe and save. You can have it sent to your residence whenever you want. You're the captain. You're in charge. Just make sure you're drinking Celsius energy drinks. Make Celsius your number one pick. Celsius, the official energy drink of the Pewter Report podcast. Thanks to uh, G Vegas <laughs> uh, clapping it up for that segue. I appreciate it. Uh, sometimes they just kind of come to you, which is which is nice. Uh, Jesse says Astro Vibe is great. That's awesome. Like seeing that. Um, Adam, let's get back to Levante real quick. In terms of we, I would be shocked if Levante goes anywhere else besides. Tampa Bay, but he is also a free agent and thus teams could try to woo him probably will not work, but Hey, you don't know until uh, you try. Yeah. There was an article that came out a couple months ago, came out in late January, but you know, the, the season's done, but the regular season's done by then. Um, and it's on PFF by Brad Spielberg, who's very, very highly respected. Uh, by us and, of course, uh, across the NFL. He had a ranking of the top linebackers, um, free agent inside linebackers for the season. He had Levante David at number two. Hmm. First was actually still in the NFC South with Frankie Louvu at one. Levante two, Patrick Queen at three. Jordan Brooks from the Seahawks at four. Bobby Wagner, also from the Seahawks, at five. Finally, Levante David gets the better of uh, <laughs> right one time of Bobby Wagner. Aziz Al Shair from the Titans at six. Get live forty five. Devin White at seven. Uh, we'll just do the top ten. Um, Josie Jewell from the Broncos at eight. Blake Cashman from the Texans at nine. Rounding out the top ten, Drew Tranquil of the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, 
I mean, every Bucks fan is going to say Levante David should be number one. I have yeah. no issue there if you want to put him one. I'm also not going to freak out that he's two on the list. Um, and I actually think it's kind of realistic, too, that, you know, Devin White, they actually have him down further on the list at seven versus... Yeah, they don't have him one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you know, you talk to Ray Lewis and he's like, they ask him his top five, and he's like, ah, fifth. Uh, why don't we put in Devin White or something like that? Yeah. So, I don't know. It's so interesting that um, people outside of Tampa still think Devin White is the bee's knees. And I don't get it. Yeah. I don't get it. I, I, don't, I don't either. And looking at that list, there's a lot of good linebackers on that list. I'd honestly say like eight and nine, like Jewel and Cashman. They yeah. should maybe be up a little higher, but – Wagner and David are kind of interchangeable at one and two Patrick queen and Devin white. You can make a case like their age and like they have more potential, both LSU guys, but Levante David, when you look at the inside linebacker position, he's still probably the best free agent on that list, but no other team real realistically should be in pursuit of Levante because it's, it's bucks or bust at this point. I don't see him suiting up for another team. Rocking yeah. another jersey besides that creamsicle or that red and pewter. Or that all pewter. Um, yeah, I mean, last year at the time, it was like, oh, could Levante go to the Dolphins? Because they were the, kind of the up-and-coming team. Still in and, Florida. He went to and, Miami Northwestern. He's, yeah, he's from the Miami area. And then I think, like, within the first hour of free agency, the Dolphins signed a separate inside linebacker and – didn't have to worry about that. This year, they did cut a linebacker, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so, Jerome Baker. Yeah, so they... <laughs> Baker, Baker Mayfield. Ooh. I don't know. Another Just, Baker. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> not Bacon right now. Bacon in the sun in Florida. Yep. Uh, both Bakers would be. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, I don't know. Like, again, I know Levante has a place in Miami. He's still there a good amount. The AFC is still a bloodbath. Like, I don't necessarily know if you'd want to go to Miami because you do have to play in New England. Uh, where, uh, like, obviously, no one's afraid of the Patriots now, but... Uh, no. Um, whatchamacallit. Just playing in the colds. Obviously, Levante can do it. He played in Nebraska. But, like, I don't know. You can save yourself trips to Buffalo and New England every year and, and obviously, in New York slash New Jersey where the Jets play. Yeah. Where, like, you know, you stay in the NFC South... Atlanta's inside. New Orleans is inside. Carolina can get a little chilly, but it's never like crazy freezing. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't even, outside of Miami, there's not even one team that pops into my head of like, oh, watch out That's for them. Like, like Baker, you could rattle it off. Like, oh, the Falcons, uh, the Steelers, if they want to do it. The Patriots, if if they want to draft Marvin Harrison uh, with, their, uh, with their first round pick. Obviously, Minnesota, if Kirk Cousins goes to Atlanta. Like Denver, actually Denver, I don't think could afford Baker because they're still paying Russell Wilson. But you get my yeah. point. Like other players, you can even Mike. Like you could have tied Mike to other teams or connect the dots or kind of reason it in your own head. Levante, I just absolutely can't. No, I can't. Like the only team like I would think of, it's never going to happen, would be the Falcons, just because of Raheem Morris. You know, being uh, the defensive coach back in the day, now he's a yeah. head coach. It's like maybe, but otherwise, no. It's He's going to be in Tampa. He's going to be a Buccaneer. I don't see it in my head going any other way. So I, I brought this up to Scott the other day. Um, people are asking about Fred Warner. I think Fred Warner is still under contract, which is why he's yeah. not. But um, if he wasn't, Fred Warner would be number one. There would be no oh, question sure. about it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so I asked Scott this the other day. For the Bucks, would they want to... And Levante would have to commit to this, but to sign Levante to a two-year deal instead of just consecutively doing one-year deals, because um, I think you would lock in Levante for a certain price, and then you're rolling the dice a little bit. Both sides are kind of rolling the dice, because if Levante plays like he did last season, and you kind of get him in, let's just say, for like $7 million a year. Let's just say yeah. two years, $14 million, $7 million a year. He gets a pay increase after, like, the bonuses and things like that. He gets a pay increase, 
and you get him for two years. But if he starts declining a little bit, again, you're not on the hook for too much because it's only for two seasons. It's a little bit of a risk for the Buccaneers, but Levante still gets his payday at the end of the day. On the flip side of it, though, if you're Levante, what if you have an even better season or just as good of a right. season that kind of requires you to get paid a little bit more? Then he's kind of rolling the dice a bit by being like, I can do better than this and I should get paid back to my 12 million a year like I was kind of before that or at least get to like 10 million a year. Uh, that's a bit of a, a dice to roll, but curious what you think about it. I think for the Bucks and Levante David, it'd probably be in their best interest to keep doing one-year deals because you look at yeah. the the salary cap and the way that it exploded this year, it might rise again. Like 10 million next year might be 7 million this year. So mm. you kind of got to look at it like having an arrangement every season. Like, hey, I'm going to suit up. I'm going to put on the cleats. Hey, Jason Light, give me a one-year deal. Kind of have keep that ball rolling. I I don't really see the Bucks being disloyal to Levante because Levante has been so loyal. Yeah. So I, I would understand the one year unless he really wants that security. And he's like, Hey, wanted that two year, 14 million, just lock me in. I'm ready to go. But I'd probably say lean towards a one year deal. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. It's the same. It's the same route of, uh, you know, what they did with like Rondé Barber at the end of uh, yeah. his career, which is still crazy to say that Rondé Barber and Levante David were teammates. <laughs> yeah at a time so uh yeah that's that's kind of funny to say but yeah we'll, we'll see with levante obviously next week is a very big week with uh the legal tampering of free agency Ooh. coming up and we're obviously all gonna be on pins and needles waiting for the baker mayfield type of stuff but uh, levante i i wouldn't even expect something to be done maybe that first day but i think within those first three days of free agency we we really could be uh, seeing something with him outside of that though. Um, yeah. Just appreciate Levante David for all that he's done. <laughs> now, Matt, I want to ask you when you look at the inside linebacker position, let's say Levante returns for another season. They have KJ Britt, uh, Sebastian Dennis and JJ Russell. Do you yeah. think they need to add anyone else with a draft pick, a free agent? Should they look at the position or should that be a next year thing? I think they should look at the position, but if they're drafting, it shouldn't be until minimum round four. Okay. Minimum yeah. round four. Because I just think, like, how do you justify taking a linebacker in round three when you still need an upgrade at center, an outside linebacker, a safety across yeah. from Anton Winfield Jr., potentially another corner, depending on the Carlton thing? Um you kind of have that in place. So I'd be fine if it was like round four or five. Obviously, maybe quarterback becomes precedent. A wide receiver that you can try to get as like a wide receiver three this season, I still think is even more important than a linebacker. An inexpensive veteran, I'm also very much down with. I, I always yeah. felt Bucks had a good thing going when Kevin Minter was the backup inside linebacker for them back in 2020 and, and 2021. You know, he had started to lose a step for sure. Um, with all that said, I think having a veteran presence, especially with a young group, I mean, obviously, Levante, if he's there, is that veteran presence. But if Levante's yeah. not able to play, still having another guy around to, to really help out, I get it, he'd be new in a new situation. And KJ Britt's been there for long enough. I think relatively cheap and inexpensive. You can't go wrong, especially if you have KJ Britt and Sarase Dennis kind of locking it down and JJ Russell as well. So uh, later on, maybe, but uh, yeah, certainly not, not at the top of the list for the Bucks. Yeah. Unless there's somebody like Peyton Wilson, if he's on the board at like number 57, you really have to consider it just for the combine that he had. But otherwise, I agree, like round five to seven, maybe just get another body in the room. But it, KJ Britt did really well for himself last year, I thought, in replacing Devin White. Yeah. And he should at least get a shot at the starting role. I agree. I agree. I, I thought he just brought stability and consistency, which is really all that we had been asking for from Devin White. Like, you can't have the great Devin White if there's also awful Devin in the same game. Because the yeah. awful tended to outweigh the great stuff that Levante, uh, that sorry, that Devin White did. So 
you got a guy that's not necessarily a game wrecker like KJ Britt, but he was able to get the job done over and over again. And, uh, you know, the games that the Bucks lost at the end of the season or the playoff game against the Lions, I don't think it was because KJ Britt. It was a lot of different yeah. things, but KJ Britt, I don't think was like the crux of the issue, as Tom Bucks fan says. KJ Britt has the run game down, has to prove on pass coverage. Good effort. Yeah. I mean, I all you're asking that. for, all you're really asking for is uh is effort. So um I think that's important. G Vegas says Britain Dennis needs to have some new competition during training camp, though. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm all for, like, not resting on your laurels, keeping guys motivated, uh, things like that. So, Ryan St. Dennis is going into year two. Um, I think he should be as excited as anybody to, you know, keep keep playing football, you know. Uh, Jesse also says, look, that's why we drafted Dennis. That's also true. Like, that's why Ryan St. Dennis is in there. But now you kind of need someone behind K.J. Britt besides just, like, J.J. Russell. So I yeah. definitely do see uh, that side of it as well. Want to uh, talk about something else too? Um, it's NFC South related, okay, but not necessarily Bucks related. Have you seen what's going on with the Saints and Michael oh, Thomas? A little bit. Something with his contract being like outrageous, like the guarantees on it. Well, that and Michael Thomas just like absolutely freaking out about it because like the Saints. Oh no. The Saints have to cut him by, I the think, third the day. third day of the NFL year, or they owe him $119 million, and they're obviously yeah. not going to pay him $119 million in bonuses and uh, guarantees. So Michael Thomas is essentially claiming that the Saints are leaking this stuff to a certain reporter. I, I forgot the reporter's name. I kind of looked at it real quick. And then Michael Thomas is going after that reporter. He's called him some derogatory names, which we can't say here uh, on this program. I mean, we probably could, but I'm just not because I don't feel like it. I don't yeah. feel like getting in hot water. It's Thursday. The weekend's almost here, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but, yeah, Michael Thomas, what a <laughs> – as Tom Fox <laughs> fan says, pay the man. Yeah. Um, man, what a fall from grace for Michael Thomas. I mean, he went from, like, first-team all-pro wide receiver to – Slant boy, you know, Carlton Davis owning his ass <laughs> in Carlton Davis's words and just unable to play because of health and things of that nature. It's been a been a true fall from grace. Yeah. And the injuries have just really taken a toll on him. Like, you can't really remember a stretch of games where he was on the field really producing. Like he had that one extraordinary season where he caught over 140 passes from Drew Brees and then kind of just fell off the map where did slant boy go carlton yeah. davis he's probably smiling right now in a good mood about it but yeah michael thomas fall from grace and for the saints man every year the way that they have to navigate their cap it gets tougher and tougher and all of their talent like their young talent every year they can't afford it so it's like when does it end for new orleans yeah i don't get it though with the saints because they still like kind of get it done each year in terms of like getting under the cap and yeah, like they'll lose a guy here and there, but they don't they don't have to like completely strip their team. Like they haven't yeah. had to completely gut their team. And yeah, I would still take the Bucks over them in terms of head to head and winning the division and things of that nature. But I mean, let's not act like the Saints still haven't been a thorn in the side of the Bucks. Yeah. Let's not act like the Bucks you know, cruise their way to the to the NFC South Championship last year. The Saints were still very much in the running, and the Bucks had to keep winning at the end of the season in order to stay ahead of everybody. So, you know, the Saints still, uh, the Saints still like do create issues for the uh, Buccaneers. Kathy Gillespie says we are so lucky to have Mike and Chris. Most wide receivers seem to be divas. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, Honestly, I think in today's day and age, there is still is the quote unquote diva wide receiver. There's a lot of diva cornerbacks now. Yeah. And, uh, they, like corners become the new diva position in the NFL for uh, whatever reason. Anyway, um, like, the, like the days of uh, Randy Moss and Terrell Owens, they're yeah. kind of gone, but it's like, the corners don't want to throw Sauce Gardner in there, though. But he, no, Sauce, he likes to talk his, Sauce his game. Sauce is just trying to. Uh, just trying to make the Jets better, like by being yeah. the GM and stuff like that. But yeah, he did have a funny one the other day. It was like 
some Giants fans on a on a stream, and they were like praying that the Jets would pick really anyone besides Evan Neal, so that the Giants could get Evan Neal, who's a pretty good offensive tackle. But they were like, "You idiots! You idiots!" <laughs> like we got Evan Neal, and Sauce said something like, "I wonder what these guys are doing now." So I thought that was very funny. Uh, he's great on social media. Oh yeah. But we got a good comment from. Centario Greer, who says signing Levante to a two-year deal is zero risk. There's no drop-off in his play, and he's durable. He was interviewed recently saying, I have a lot of football left in me that screams two-year minimum. Yeah, that's a good point with uh, his comments. I, I don't recall if it was on Ronnie and T-Crass or when he I was on so. uh, Good Morning Football. So it was one of the two where he said it for sure. And yeah, when you say something like that, It does kind of make you think, is he talking about more than one season? Now, the problem is, the next time we have Levante David live and in person, whether it's up at the podium, whether it's in the locker room, if he gets asked about how much more he wants to play, he's he's just going to say, I'm going to take it season by season. I'm focused on right now. I'm focused on this team. He's never going to answer and say, yeah, you know what? I actually think... 2026. Yeah, I'm going to play three years now that I think of it. He's... and he's he's right for answering it that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, like, you, there's no risk in signing Levante to two years because even in the second year, like, he'll still have a part with the team. Like, he's not going to just fall off a cliff. He'll, he'll still suit up, still be that leader. That in and of itself has value. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And one thing for sure that I'm looking forward to if Levante David returns to the Buccaneers is – Betting on the number of tackles that he'll have in a game, which, of course, if you want to bet on the Bucks or really any sport that's going on, I know football is a ways away, but you got March Madness right around the corner with that tournament. The NBA is in full swing. Hockey as well. The NHL, UFC, a lot of great stuff. If you're going to be betting on any sport, go ahead and do it over at mybookie.ag. Sign up for my bookie using the promo code Pewter, that's P-E-W-T-E-R, and get free money in your my bookie account that you can use to start betting. So free money in your account. Even if you learn from Plant City Math, you know that that is a heck of a deal. So go to my bookie, use the promo code Pewter, and also check out their online casino. They got all the great stuff, so if you can't make the trip to your actual casino, you can enjoy it straight from your couch and still play all the same games, the slots, roulette, blackjack, craps, all that fun stuff. Go to mybookie.ag and use that promo code PEWTER. That's P-E-W-T-E-R. All right, as we close out the show, a little bit of um, housekeeping, I guess we should say. Tomorrow... No podcast, but Mike Evans is having a uh, press conference at noon uh, on Friday. So Pewter Report will be covering that and uh, have some content from it. And obviously you can check out our social media to find it as well. Next week, very, very, very big. It's the start of legal tampering with free agency. We'll know by then if Baker Mayfield is a free agent or if he signs with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We'll see who the Bucs are signing. We'll see who everyone else is signing. We'll have a free agency tracker that will be constantly updated. So if you're busy throughout the day, maybe you got a work meeting, you might miss something. Don't worry. Just go to PeterReport.com, click on the uh, free agency tracker, and you'll have everything you need to see right then and there. So obviously next week's podcast will be a lot about free agency, who the Bucs sign, any current bucks that signed elsewhere that are free agents at the moment a lot to break down next week and bucks battle plans are coming out as we speak too uh josh capo dropped his last night scott reynolds has his coming out today then adam myself and bailey will round out uh the rest of the next coming days with our bucks battle plan so feel free to grade them give your thoughts and opinions come up with your own bucks battle plan or what you would have done differently Totally fine with that as well. So a lot of great stuff coming up on pewterreport.com. In the meantime, if you're not already doing so, please follow us on our social media on X, Facebook, and Instagram. And our YouTube channel is Pewter Report TV, where we do the podcast. We have various clips from uh, just interviews, the Bucks facility, practice, 
events like the combine, things like that. So tons and tons of content over on our YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment on this video as well. Once this uh, episode is over, you can go into the comments and please uh, do so and subscribe. We're really trying to get the 14 thousand by the nfl draft which is at the end of april we're almost halfway there we're right around thirteen thousand four hundred. so we want to get there as quickly as we possibly can and we appreciate yep. all the help from you the pewter people all right that's going to do it for us on today's show for adam slavon i'm matt matera saying thanks everybody for watching have a great weekend and we'll see you next monday for another edition of the pewter report podcast Out. Out.